Alrighty, part three of Named Weapons. Oh, this is going to be fun. Also, it's like 30 degrees here at the moment, so if I sound extra crabby and angry, it's Baker's Dozen's fault. Up first, we have the Virginian, comes with perfect boomerang. Critical hits have a 75% chance to return the bullet to magazine. If the bullet is returned to the magazine, the next shot is 50% increase in damage. It's the named 1886, and although these are the highest single shot rifles in the game, perfect boomerang doesn't really pair too well with it because you're not really going to enjoy or feel the effect of the damage increase more so just getting an extra round in the magazine that is going to be your biggest benefit in which case yeah it just kind of feels like it just falls short it is nice it's fun but it just doesn't feel right if it had perfect rifleman i feel like we'd have a decent contender for one of the best rifles in the game but alas it doesn't now we have baker's shit which comes with perfect lucky shit increases the magazine capacity by 30 percent missed shots from cover have a 100 percent chance to be returned to the magazine now admittedly it is a classic m1a one of the best probably is the best rifle in the game there is nothing wrong with the weapon itself my issue with it is purely the talent. Missed shots while you're in cover have a 100% chance to return to the magazine. Now although this sounds great, what it's actually teaching you is to play bad. And then when you do get a hit, it consumes the shot. Essentially it's rewarding bad play and punishing good play. If this was the other way around, that when you hit the enemy in cover it returned the shot, kind of like Boomerang, I would have a very much different opinion on this, but as it stands at the moment, this weapon is probably one of my most hated things in the game because it is teaching people to be lazy and lackluster. And generally, I do find that people that like this weapon are generally on the worse side of the player skill side thing. Now, that being said, obviously, that does encompass newer players. If you are a newer player, and you pick up a baker's dozen great you have an m1a that is going to help you manage your ammo especially early game until you get a bit more experience however i absolutely recommend ditching it as soon as possible try and get yourself an m1a with boomerang or rifleman this will suit you so much better and it actually rewards your play and gets you out of utilizing bad habits such as just mindlessly spamming in the hopes that you actually hit something Stage left, this is a named SOCOM M1A. The SOCOM series is the worst within the M1A bracket. However, it is still an M1A. Comes with perfect sledgehammer, which debuffs the enemy, causing them to take damage on their armor, as well as their armor platings, by a 40% amp increase. It will also reduce their movement speed by 10%. Now, annoyingly, because it's sledgehammer, it's going to hinge on your ability to throw a grenade, if you have a grenade, because they're in short supply, as well as the simple fact that when you throw a grenade, enemies like to just dive and roll and do weird animations to get out of it. So the weapon itself is actually really good. Sledgehammer is kind of... I kind of want to say it's very badly thought out. However, due to the amount of damage that Sledgehammer can actually provide, I kind of feel like it's pretty balanced being it... having it limited to grenades. Now we have the Surge. This is kind of weird. The Surge is a named M4. It gives perfect spike and headshots grant 25% skill damage for 15 seconds. Normal spike is 20% skill damage. At which point, at the end of your build calculation, roughly it's going to be dependent on build but the difference between spike and perfect spike is going to be about 1.8 percent increase in damage across your entire build so perfect spike isn't really worth it in the long run along with the fact that it's an m4 and this is just going to be like a repeat subject throughout talking about all of the named rifles is just m1a most rifles are incredibly unbalanced. It's kind of unfair because one of my favorite rifles is the M4. But in comparison to just anything M1A, it really does just fall short. It's kind of sad and it's going to be a repeat sentence. It should have just been on an M M1A. 
In short, if you want to use Spike, just get an M1A and put Spike on it. You'll just do so much better. And the overall effect that you'll lose between Spike and Perfect Spike will be made up for vastly by the fact that you've gone from an M4 to an M1A. And just because I like repeating myself, Everlasting Gaze, named MK17, has perfect perpetuation, headshots grant 50% skill effect, damage and duration for the next status effect you apply has a cooldown of 16 seconds. Normal perpetuation is basically the exact same, the difference is just the cooldown, where it goes from 20 seconds and then perfect is 16. And then again, we enter the same problem of just get an M1A with perpetuation on. One, the, the damage output is going to be the exact same, minus the fact that you're going from an MT. 17 to an M1A, but the difference in cooldown is mostly going to be negligible simply just because if you are playing a pyro build, 16 seconds to 20 seconds is not going to make a difference during shorter engagements, and during longer engagements, there's not a high chance of you proccing it twice. Now we have Harmony, which is a named Resolute MK47, comes with perfect in sync. Hitting enemy grants 20% skill damage for 5 seconds. Using a skill or damaging an enemy with a skill gives 20% weapon damage. Getting both procs doubles them for the same amount of time. And enter M1A spiel here. Now all this being said, I also do use Harmony on my skill build. I use a capacitor, this is an AR, and I use Harmony for the rifle. That's just how I like it. Mathematically and theoretically and in practice, Harmony is not very good. It's also the same with Everlasting Gaze, but then I also use Everlasting Gaze on my Pyro build. So regardless of my opinion of them in this video or how they stack up mathematically, do not let this sway you as to whether you should or should not use a weapon if you like it. Mathematically, Everlasting Gaze is pretty much a piece of shit, but I exclusively use it on my Eclipse build because I want to. And finally, Artist Tool with Perfect Rifleman, cue the endgame crowd going, oh, if only this was on an M1A. Artist Tool is a SIG 716, Perfect Rifleman, landing headshots adds a stack of a bonus 11% weapon damage, and it stacks up to six times, giving us another 66% weapon damage. This is very, very powerful, and at maximum stacks, it is able to just about compete with an M1A, until you realise that person with the M1A also has Rifleman and they get one stack and then suddenly M1A is back in the lead again. It's not necessarily a bad weapon, it does require a very specific build to get it worthwhile. However, like I said, by the time it gets to a point of being able to even compete with an M1A, one stack on an M1A basically just completely and utterly outperforms it yet again. Now we're going to move on to MMRs and I'm just going to do this into sort of like three chunks just because the top bracket is these are actually pretty good. One of them is actually the meta MMR weapon. There's another two which are okay but they do really fall short especially in late game and then the remainder are well they don't do enough damage for headhunter. Their accuracy and stability is shocking so you can't really utilize them as an effective DPS so what the fuck are you thinking? Right, top bracket, White Death and O'Carroll. These are both M44s, which are, for vanilla weapons, the most powerful. They both come with 137% headshot damage, which is basically where their power lies. However, O'Carroll also gets Twinkling Lights, which if you get a headshot kill at night time, you get Sparkly Sparklies. Outside of exotics, these are the highest damaging MMRs, perfect for Headhunter, and White Death is... Again, outside of exotics, the meta MMR in the game. Next we have They Do OK, which is Ekim's Long Dick, Model 700, and Scalpel Tactical 308. Now both of these weapons do enough damage to perform OK with Headhunter. They will struggle in Legendary or in 4-man scaling. However, the main reason they're not that great is quite simply, Ranger is not really that much of a decent talent. It's actually pretty piss poor. And the benefit to the 308 is out of all of the bolt action MMRs, it is the highest in DPS. Which means if you don't necessarily get the kill, you're able to do a follow up shot pretty damn quick. As well as Future Perfect isn't really that much of a bad idea to have on an MMR. The only downside being if you're going to go this route, same with Mechanical Animal, you'd be better off even with the M700 putting Future Perfect on that. Obviously, get yourself a white death with Future Perfect and you're laughing, but 
we're just looking at the name weapons so beggars can't be choosers. Which leaves us with this lovely pile of shit. The Darkness doesn't have enough damage to operate using Headhunter. The accuracy and stability is absolutely terrible. Bad weapon. Designated Hitter is probably the best out of this bunch simply just because the SR1 is a pretty decent damaging MMR. However, the downside to this weapon in particular is the talent. Like, why, why would you have this on here? Then we have Pinprick, which is basically just determined light, but it does actually work as intended. Now, annoyingly, again, Pinprick isn't that bad, but just when compared to the others, it absolutely just fall short then with commando it's the svd svd is mainly going to be really used as a dps weapon not trying to consistently hit headshots and especially headshots against unarmored enemies because they're not going to be the problem and then finally we have relic now putting my personal issues with determined and how it's basically aimbot but legal aside Relic being a G28 is just mostly incapable of making use of its own talent because in order to do this you're going to have to be able to get consistent headshot kills which Relic doesn't do enough damage to capitalize on unless you're playing on hard. And to finish this off we're just going to delve into the pistols however with the pistols I am just going to skip over the specialization pistols being the Sharpshooters 93R, Survivalist D50, the Maxim 9, and the P320X Compact. Main reason being is these are all pretty lackluster weapons and the only one that really actually stands out is the not aforementioned Deceros Special which comes with Perfect Optimist and that's simply just because Deceros is a pretty powerful handgun, Optimist is a pretty safe and decent to use talent and other than that the rest of them just they're, they're just lackluster up first we have pocket coyotes i mean orbit has perfect finisher swapping from this weapon within 10 seconds of getting a kill of an enemy grants 35 percent critical hit chance and 40 percent critical hit damage for 15 seconds this is immensely powerful the pistol itself is okay the uh 586 Magnum isn't exactly the worst pistol in the game, especially when it comes to damage. However, pairing this with Dodge City Holster allows you for a one-shot mechanic, especially on reds, purples. I believe it does struggle against elites, but you never know, you might get a headshot. However, the real power from this comes from just getting that emergency kill or just your starting engagement kill, buffing yourself for the next 15 seconds and away you go. This will outperform Coyotes, and if managed correctly, it's not too hard to at least have this permanently active while engaged, at least in a firefight. I don't mean to your uh, wife or husband or fiancés. That would be a bit weird. Then we have the Prophet, which is theoretically actually really, really bad. Easy way to explain this is when you use Determined, do you use Prophet? Or do you use a D50 with Determined? Pretty sure like 9 out of 10 of you are going to go D50. Even then, how many bullets is it going to take you to kill 6 enemies? Probably you're going to say 6, assuming you don't miss. Yeah, Regulus exists. 1. Now we have Mozambique Special. Perfect breadbasket. Landing body shots adds a stack of 50% bonus headshot damage. To the next headshot for 10 seconds max stack is two this is actually pretty damn decent simply because pistols come with 100 headshot anyway so just casually shooting and getting 200 headshot damage for just trying to live is not really a bad way to go again though this falls into the same trap as the prophet does regulus exists or just a d50 with determined at this point and lightning rod Yay, killing an enemy has an 85% chance to refill the magazine. Now I won't lie, I have never used this weapon, and for good reason. So I have no idea if that refill actually comes from your ammo pool, in which case, bad. However, if it doesn't, and it just comes out of that mythical, magical place where all ammo just exists in infinite quantities, then it's actually not going to be that bad for like a DPS pistol setup. But why you would use this, other than for the memes, I'm not too sure. Now annoyingly, the 
PF45, the series that Lightning Rod is in, is the second lowest DPS pistol in the game. So even actually doing this, even for the memes, there are just generally better options. And finishing this off on a high note, we have the TDI card custom, which just comes with a skill slot. Now this is unironically one of the best pistols in the game, but not because it's a pistol, just because it comes with a skill tier. Have a revive hive, friend goes down, swap to your pistol, drop the revive hive, they pick up, you still have one charge on your revive hive. If you need to get in a, a, a little bit of extra out from a turret, and you're not have running a skill build, but you have a turret anyway for some weird reason, get into cover, pull your pistol out, throw your turret, use your armor kit, do what you need to do, crack on with life. This is technically one of the best weapons in the game, simply because of what it can passively give you for existing. And pretty much, well, as far as I'm aware, any end game player worth their salt will tell you if you are not running an exotic pistol, your pistol should be the TDI, just because of that skill tier. It's amazing how much one skill tier can actually give you. It is very much worth it. Anyway, that is going to be it for this video. Have fun, good luck, don't die. Bad for the health.